Hey there everyone welcome to another video today in this video I will be testing the stock thermal paste on this stock AMD cooler and then later in the video I am going to replace this stock thermal paste that AMD used to include with their heat sinks and I'm going to replace that with some premium thermal paste this is the Noctua's NTH1 this is regarded as one of the very best thermal compounds that you can buy at a respectable value I would say and this is something that I have been using for the past two years and I have really liked it it performs really on par with uh, the top of the line thermal pastes that are available on the market right now this is not the absolute best but uh, if you want to buy the best then you'll have to spend about 10 times more than this and you are not going to gain any significant difference in the temperature drop so this is one of the best thermal compounds that are available right now so as i mentioned what i will be doing is i will be just getting this brand new amd cooler out of the box this is a never used cooler this is a brand new heat sink and I will be installing this in its stock state and by stock state I mean I will be using the stock thermal paste that AMD has included with this cooler and uh, I will be just installing it on this Ryzen 5 3600 we are going to start the computer we are going to have a look at uh, the CPU temperatures but before I jump onto windows and start stress testing the CPU I will be first uh, just going into the BIOS and will be setting a full fixed fan speed on this cooler so that we don't get any variables later in the video so install the cooler on the motherboard and now what I'm going to be doing is I will be just going straight to the BIOS and will be increasing its fan speed to its maximum value so now the fan is running at its full speed now it's time for me to go to windows and then I will be running Cinebench so that I can stress the CPU to get some lowered CPU temperatures so there we are we have Cinebench R23 running not actually running the program is just open and I also have the HW info running so we are going to have a look at the CPU temperatures once we get this test running so I have clicked the multi core test and here we have Cinebench running and as you can see the CPU has started getting warm we have already hit I guess 78 77 70 77 78 71 the maximum core temperature that I can see is 81C and as of now I guess this is pulling 70 watts 73 watts was the maximum 72 70 this is the sort of power consumption that we are getting so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this test complete and then in the end I'm going to record the maximum CPU temperatures here and then I will be proceeding with the replacement of the stock thermal paste that came pre-applied with the AMD cooler and I'm going to replace it with the very legendary Noctua NTH1 so I'm going to wait for the test to complete and then once the test is done we are going to have a look at the maximum CPU load temperatures so finally the test is complete we got a decent score I guess 9327 points and we have a few values for the maximum CPU load core temperatures so before I go ahead and just clean off the stock thermal paste I just wanted to touch on the fact that the stock paste was in a really good state it was I guess yeah it was liquid so it was working yeah it was working and uh, it spread out pretty nicely as well so no problems there 
I will be using some isopropyl alcohol and some paper towels to clean this and then I will be applying the NTH1. So I've cleaned off the heat sink using some isopropyl alcohol and some paper towels. It is nice and clean. This is probably the best I could do in terms of cleaning it. And I also cleaned the CPU surface. And I've also applied the Noctua's NTH1 here. All that is left from here is to just put on the CPU cooler and get all those screws tightened up. So there we are. We have the cooler installed using the Noctua's NTH1. And by the way, the testing methodology is exactly the same. I'm running a fixed fan speed. So now it's time for me to move on to the monitor screen. I'm going to do the exact same thing of running a multi-core Cinebench R23 run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this test complete and then later I'm going to record all of these temperatures and I'm going to prepare a sheet in which we can compare the difference in two. So here are the results and honestly there is not a big enough difference. A difference of just 2 degrees is not big enough so that I could recommend you to buy a $10 thermal paste for your cheap AMD stock cooler. But sure there is a difference and this difference could be a lot higher if you would have been using your AMD stock cooler for a long time and your thermal paste is all dried up then it would be a good idea to just buy a new thermal paste or just in case you have multiple AMD CPUs and if you are using the stock cooler and if you want to replace and maintain the good working of your CPU then yes you should go ahead and buy some good quality thermal paste. I would recommend you to buy the Noctua's NTH1 or it could be any other good quality thermal paste. But this does not mean that there is just a difference of 2 degrees between the stock AMD paste and the Noctua's NTH1. The NTH1 is a way better thermal compound. In this test we were limited with the size of the heatsink and we just got a difference of little over 2 degrees which is not a small difference considering the size of the heatsink. But if we would have used the same AMD thermal paste on some other more efficient cooler then this difference would have been a lot bigger because the better cooler would have dissipated heat more efficiently and in that case the poor heat transfer from the bad thermal paste would have been the problem. So this is it for this video. I would like to know what results you guys are getting and if you have any questions or queries please feel free to mention that down below as well. Thank you very much for watching and I am going to talk to you in the next one.